on the Huskies of Yukon, the battle in the Big East. Hello, everyone, and welcome to St. John's University. I'm Sam Rosen, along with the coach, Dick Vitale. A pleasure to be with you once again. Looks like a good matchup in the Big East. St. John's is nationally ranked, Dick. They are number nine by UPI, number 10 by AP, number 15 by ESPN. Are they that good? Well, let me just say this. Their record definitely is suspect. They have absolutely played what I call Cream Puff City early in the season. And you know who agrees with me? The maestro himself. Little Luigi Cornaseca said, Faison, he said, there's no way we are a top 20 team in America. Usually he plays the con game, but you know what? This time Luigi is telling the truth. Well, they are 10 and 1, 1 and 0 in the conference, meeting up with UConn, 8 and 3 overall, off to a good start, 1 and 1 in the conference, coming off a big win over Pitt. The key players tonight, Dick, I think are going to be two guards, one for each team. Well, when you talk about Connecticut, they got an electrifying scorer in Earl Kelly. Kelly is really a dynamic little shooter. He can really strip the defensive people down, and he can play. You talk about St. John's University, you talk about one of my favorite players in America, Chris Mullen. The kid can flat out play. If Michael Jordan wasn't here in the nation, let me just say this, Chris Mullen would have been a first team All-American at the big guard slot. Okay, so stay with us. This looks like a great matchup in the Big East here at St. John's University. It's the Redmen against the Huskies of UConn. And welcome back to Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University. Sam Rosen and Dick Vitale getting set for the start of tonight's game between St. John's and the University of Connecticut. Big East matchup. The Redmen 1-0 in the Big East, having beaten Providence over the weekend, 57-52. And UConn 1-1, losing to Georgetown, and then defeating Pittsburgh by 21 points on Saturday. We are set for the introduction of the starting lineups. So right now, let's go to one of the all-time great public address announcers, Bob Shepard, the voice you hear at Yankee Stadium in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the starting lineup for the University of Connecticut. At guard, number 10, Earl Kelly. At guard, number 14, Paul Mark. At center, number 34, Tim Foley. Well, we have some uh, technical problems uh, with the introductions. That's Tim Coles being introduced. At first, the guards were introduced. Earl Kelly and Carl Hobbs. Tim Coles at center. Roy Broxton will start at one forward for Connecticut. And Eddie Williams will start at the other. The UConn Huskies, 8-3 and three overall. There's Dom Perno, head coach in his seventh year at the University of Connecticut. And looking to turn things around after a 12 and 16 season last year. Now the Redmen of St. John's. And there is their star, the junior 6'6 out of Brooklyn, New York, Chris Mullen. The Big East Player of the Year last year. That's Mike Moses. Bill Wennington, who's playing with an injured ankle, he missed the last game against Providence, sprained an ankle in the win over Rutgers. Ron Stewart has moved into his starting role this season at one forward, 6'8", out of Brentwood, New York. And the other is the freshman Willie Glass out of Atlantic City, New Jersey. The Redmen of St. John's, 10-1, that one loss in the ECAC Holiday Festival to North Carolina. There's Luke Karnaseka, 16th year as head coach at St. John's, graduated St. John's in 1950. We'll be set for the tap of tonight's Big East battle between St. John's and Connecticut here at St. John's in just a moment. Sam Rosen and Dick Vitale at Alumni Hall on the campus of St. John's University. The Redmen walking out, led by Chris Mullen, outstanding junior guard. So you're not convinced about St. John's, hey, Dick? Well, their coach is not convinced as we look at the matchups on the floor. Look for Connecticut to play multiple defenses here tonight, so the matchups really become meaningless because they will not play head-to-head -head against St. John's University in a man-to-man. -man. Look for them to vary the attack defensively. I wouldn't be surprised, Sam, if we don't see a diamond and one, a four-man zone, and one man playing Chris Mullen. Chris Mullen, okay. 
UConn not a big team. Uh, the men up front, three six foot seven forwards. And I'll have to go against the big Bill Wennington, who's seven feet. Have to battle him underneath. And UConn controls. Connecticut in the blue. And this is Carl Hobbs, the senior guard out of Roxbury, Massachusetts. He controls the offense. Having a good season. The all-time assist leader for UConn, number 14, Carl Hobbs. Earl Kelly, sophomore guard. What a great year he had last season. Down low, it's Coles. Coles in traffic. Wennington fouled him. Well, they did a great job right there getting the ball inside to Coles. Coles last year was a non-factor offensively. He's starting to assert himself a little bit more on the offensive end. He catches the ball down in a post, good head fake, takes it up strong, draws the foul, and goes to the line. Coles averaging better than seven points a game. You got to get scoring out of the guy in the middle. Uh, Coles had a big day against Patrick Ewing in Georgetown, and even though they were beaten as he misses the first one of two, he had 18 points and 12 rebounds, but then comes back the next night and takes what we call in the trade the Ziggy. Scored <laughs> zip against Pittsburgh. And yet they won. Well, he and fouled, got, got himself in foul trouble. Coles hits the second, 1 0. Connecticut leading it. St. John's with Moses and Mullen in the backcourt. Moses, number 24. 2 1 2, half court trap. That'll drop back into a, well, now they're dropping back into a zone. They've already played two defenses to try and take St. John's away from their rhythm of their half court game. Moses, the junior, he'll take the shot. If they leave him open, he'll take it, and he makes it. 2-1 St. John's. Well, that shot will be open all night, Sam. UConn will look to run, but if St. John's hits that shot, they won't be able to. Kelly and Hobbs work the backcourt. St. John's mostly man-to-man. -man. Lou Carnesecca does not like to play his own unless he absolutely has to. Well, it's an interesting. He has Mullen playing the little guy. Coles banked it too hard. Wennington pulls it down, and Moses pushes it up. They're in a 2-3 zone. The wings should be open. Wennington over Coles. 4-1 St. John's. And Bill Wennington not showing any uh, bad effects from the sprained ankle. Well, that'll make the ankle get a little better when that first one goes <laughs> down. <laughs> Kelly, number 10. Moses playing Kelly. Kelly's great with the basketball. A one-on-one -on -one player right there. Led the nation in scoring as a high school senior. 39 a game. Big East Rookie of the Year last year. Hit the side of the backboard. Stewart rebounds. Here comes St. John's with a 4-1 lead. Moses, the junior, pushes it up. Kelly also a junior. Very patient team. Mullen. Knocked away, Wennington scrambles, gets tied up, and let's see which way the arrow points. It's in St. John's direction. There's the maestro, coach of the year last year. Just a dynamic little guy. Spent a lot of time with him this afternoon, and he has got all the adjectives. <laughs> Into Wennington, and it rolled out, but he was fouled on the play. There been Ray Broxton on the foul. And Big Bill Wennington will shoot two. Well, Sam, one of the ways to break a zone in addition to perimeter jump shooting and ball movement is to get it into the gut of the defense. And that's what they're doing. The first two possessions, they're driving the ball right into the seven-footer Wennington. Wennington number two in scoring for the Redmen, averaging 12 and a half points a game. And... Shooting 70% from the line, but misses the first. You know, when he started to really develop, he came on at the end of the year when Jeff Allen was injured, and he took over, and then he played exceptional basketball for Jack Donahue's Canadian national team, and they upset us in the World Games in Canada. Wennington, a junior, hits the second. 5-1 Redmen of St. John's lead, but Eddie Williams hits from outside. Eddie Williams... They call him Steady Eddie. He's from the Air Force. Three years he was in the Air Force. Didn't play high school basketball. 2-1-2 two -two zone press. And St. John's breaks it. Mullen goes up with it. Mullen the follow. And it's off Connecticut. 5-3 St. John's leading it. Played a little over two and a half minutes of the first half. A look at the junior guard, Chris Mullen. From well, Brooklyn, one, New York. One of his great assets is his motion without the basketball. A lot of contact going in the post area. Try to get it down. Lone is knocked away. Try to get it into Willie Glass. And UConn pushing it up in a hurry. Earl Kelly missing in the rebound. Stewart. Well, he can either shoot you in a basketball game or shoot you out of a game. Kelly can. 
Moses traveled with it. 17 minutes, one second to go as you look at Mike Moses. Well, you know, his rhythm is going to be something that he has to just get a little bit more familiar on the floor. He sat out a year. He's a transfer from over at the University of Florida where he played for Norman Sloan for two years. Deflected nicely by Glass. Here comes Moses on the two-on-one. Challenges Broxton who fouled him. St. John's will run on a turnover. They do not really like to run or push the ball up the floor. But any time a turnover is created on a floor, here's the left hand of Moses, takes it strong, should have went a little wider and dumped it off, Sam, with a little bounce pass to the cutter. But there was a lack of communication by the cutter in the lane. Mike Moses, who is from New York, a junior. He went to Tollentine High School, where he was an outstanding guard his senior year in high school, initially gave a verbal commitment to another Italian Dynamo coach by the name of Jimmy Valvano, <laughs> but then changed his mind and went down south for Norman Sloan. St. John's by three, and Carl Hobbs pushes it up for Connecticut. A little over three minutes gone by, and traveling is called on Eddie Williams of Connecticut. Connecticut really has problems when they have to attack a half-court defense. They are a transition basketball team with excellent athletes who can run up and down the floor. 1-3-1 one, one zone now. They're changing another look. And that's Moses guarded by Hobbs. Mullen. What a sweet shot. Chris Mullen, who shoots better than 56% from the floor, hitting from outside St. John's by 5-8-3, 16-10 to go. Eddie Williams tries to answer back. Willie Glass with a rebound. The freshman pushes it up, lets it off to Stewart, and he let it go too soft. That's one of the few, finger roll. One of the few times you'll see them really push it out and run with the ball. And Eddie Williams comes right back. UConn pushing it up. Good transition. Well, Sam, that tempo favors UConn. UConn wants St. John's to run up and down. Louis Kornaseka yells to his guard, Moses, slow it down, or I'm going to put you next to me as an assistant coach. <laughs> Connecticut getting set to make a couple of substitutions as Moses misses from outside. Ron Stewart with a good rebound. He's a role player. They look for him to get some garbage off the glass like he did there and try and score maybe eight or ten points a game. Big Wennington in the paint goes to the other side and they bring it around to Ron Stewart. Off the back rim and it's UConn on the boards. Tim Coles. Connecticut trailing by three. This is Carl Hobbs. Broxton, who had a big game against Pittsburgh with 16 points and 10 rebounds, hits from outside. Well, he was rated as one of the top 25 junior college players in America by Sporting News. And again, he's an excellent athlete, a transitional player who can shoot the open jump shot, as he demonstrated there. UConn with a couple of key additions, and we'll see another one in a moment, Alvin Frederick. And here comes Connecticut with a chance to take the lead. Hobbs to Williams. And UConn by one, nine to eight. Nice break by Hobbs. That's fast break clinic basketball. The way to penetrate, find the open cutter, running a 45 degree angle cut. Excellent transition basketball by UConn. Two six, three zone. Six straight points for the Huskies. Who lead nine to eight with 14.25 to go in the first half. Mullen with a, just a little fake and a nice one and he drops it in. Oh. He's got a, a little great, head fake. He's got a great head fake, and if you put him on a foul line, he's automatic. One of the great foul shooters in America. Mullen has four. St. John's by one. Ten to nine. Notice Mullen playing Hobbs. He'll not come out and pressure him. He'll play about eight feet off him. Russell off the ball. It's an offensive foul. No, it's not. It's on St. John's underneath. Oh, I'll reverse that again. It's on Tim Coles of Connecticut. We have a timeout on the floor. 14.03 to go. First half, St. John's leading Connecticut 10 to 9. Well, you know, you mentioned North Carolina State and a little reality setting in after their early start, and they're having some problems right now, but Jimmy V doesn't have enough of talent this year. A couple of substitutions for Connecticut. Vern Giscombe, number 12, is in the lineup at guard. Outside, that's Ron Stewart hitting. St. John's also has brought Jeff Allen in the ball game, number 22. Glass got a piece of the ball, and it's knocked out of bounds. Good play by Frederick as he threw it off the legs of Ron Stewart. That's Alvin Frederick, number 21 in blue, for Connecticut now in the lineup. There's Vern Giscombe. 
He broke his wrist and missed the first seven games. In fact, he didn't start practicing again till, until December 26th. Connecticut also has Jerry Besselink, a good-looking freshman from Kingston, Ontario, in the lineup. He goes 6'8". It was Besselink, Coles, and Frederick up front. Frederick was fouled underneath. Looks like Mike Moses on the foul. Has a look at Ron. We watched a good exchange along the baseline. Horizontal screens down at a base, just come, dumps it down. First team All American uh, at Mattatuck Junior College was Frederick, and he scores 11 points per game off the bench. Hobbs and Jiscom, two freshmen, are the guards for Connecticut. Frederick, number 21. St. John's man to man, a sagging man to man. They will not put a lot of pressure on the guards because they know they can't penetrate. St. John's by three. There's Alvin Frederick putting it up. The rebound, Willie Glass, fouled by Besselink from behind. You know, Dom Perno certainly. I'm sure it doesn't like that shot. One pass to the wing, up it goes. You don't get any rhythm into your offense. And most of all, you don't get good offensive rebounding position. St. John's led by five. Connecticut came back with six in a row to take a one-point lead. Now St. John's by three again. Mullen takes it again. This one drops through. The shooter's roll for Chris Mullen. He has six. St. John's by five again. Hobbs right back for UConn. Mullen did a great job getting into the seam of the zone defense. It was a 1-1-3, a tandem and a three-man defense as we watch Connecticut operate in their half-court game. That's Hobbs. Hobbs is not a player that looks for a shot all that much. Here's Frederick. Jiscom. And Byrne Jiscom out of the Bronx, New York, hits. And it's 14 to 11, St. John's by three. Well, there's Perno. He yells, great shot. If it didn't go down, it's a better shot, Mr. Jiscom. <laughs> Jiscom averaged over 25 a game at Cardinal Hayes, the school that produced Kevin Lockley. The freshman misses. Willie Glass, the follow by Stewart, goes off. And Alvin Frederick has it for Connecticut. And they get it up in a hurry. Hobbs. Down low. That's Coles. And Connecticut comes right back, down by five. They get it down to one. Coles is a cheerleader. He's a very emotional player. But Connecticut's game is their transition. Here goes a little half-court trap. Just got to swing the ball. They got to get the ball in the hands of Mullen just a little bit more. Jeff Allen is now underneath, number 22, the senior center. Willie Glass down low is bumped underneath. No. He traveled before the bump. I thought we had a bump also. I think Joe Sylvester missed one, but he's entitled to miss one. We have a timeout on the floor, 11.30 to go, first half. St. John's 14, UConn 13. We'll be back in just a moment. <laughs> Connecticut down by one. Hobbs number 14, pressured by Moses. St. John's went to a 3-2 yes. zone in a timeout. Coles missed, and Moses rebounds for the Redmen. And they look at Moses, they say, get away from us, little fella. You're not supposed to be there. Mullen. Always ready to pump it up. There it is. Alvin Frederick over to Carl Hobbs. Nice move by Hobbs. Missed the shot. And Besseling bumped with Jiscom. They lost the rebound. Glass ahead of the field. Willie Glass, the freshman. Well, he can't be spectacular. Plays a little bit out of control. Shot selection still questionable. But he is going to be an outstanding St. John's player. Half court trap. Can't question that last shot. St. John's by three. Alvin Frederick over Allen. Alvin Frederick, who can hit that shot. He is the third leading scorer on the team, as Dick mentioned, comes off the bench and averages better than 11 a game. St. John's by one. 10 minutes, 15 seconds to go, first half. One, Jeff three, Allen down low. That's Ron Stewart. Mullen keeps it alive. Mullen goes 6'6". Six, six. Well, he had that injury. He broke his foot at the Pan American Trials. Allen on the turnaround. Alvin Frederick with a rebound. And this club really likes to push it up the floor. Hobbs from outside again, and it won't go down for him. Coles with a nice rebound. Well, Coles gets inside position. He's got a big body, very physical player, and he's all excited running up, looks at the scorebook, says, Hey, put that deuce in for me, baby. Sophomore from Baltimore, Maryland, and now has seven points to lead Connecticut. Nine and a half minutes to go first half. Mullen forces it up. Not a good shot. 
And here comes UConn leading by one. That ball was kicked. There's no doubt on the floor right now, Sam, that UConn definitely has much more speed. Look at the excitement out of Hobbs. He was really in a coach at practice today, whistling, cheerleader. And there's Kelly coming on the floor. They really have some good athletes that can get up and down this floor. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. They hung tough with Georgetown, finally losing by 12. They out-rebounded Georgetown that game by one. And they blew Pittsburgh absolutely oh, right away. Destroy them. Veselink's a freshman. Coles is a sophomore. Kelly is a sophomore. Frederick is a junior in his first year at UConn. Lays it in. Nice move by Alvin Frederick. Well, Frederick's demonstrated for us that he can drive to the basket, good baseline drive, and earlier he shot the good wing jump shot. Good explosive offensive player. Huskies with their biggest lead. It's three points, 19 to 16. And they play a little gimmicks defensively. Mullen. Oh, when you need a basket, give it to Mullen. Well, once he steps into the gap for the open jumper and not force it, he's automatic. 19 to 18, Connecticut by a one, and Mullen strips Frederick of the ball. Three on two, St. John's. Hobbs is back to slow Mullen down. Not a good play by Mullen. He should have centered the ball to Moses and went without it to the goal. Moses sets it up. 45 second shot clock used in the Big East. And the way UConn pushes it up, we won't have to worry about that. Mullen with a nice pass to Jeff Allen. And the senior puts it in. Well, great awareness by Mullen where his teammate is on the floor. Excellent diagonal pass off the high post entry. St. John's has regained the lead, 20 to 19. Frederick misses, Coles with a rebound. Over Allen, Allen got a piece. Besselink to follow. Hey, Besselink said, all you guys are shooting it, baby. I'm going to let it fly right back up on the glass. They're not bashful, are they, oh, Sam? Oh, not at all. Besselink's an interesting story. He, he used to like to play outside. They beefed him up a little bit. They said, you're an inside player. Well, he became a good defensive rebounder, and he grew three inches. And a whistle before that shot. Whistle outside. St. John's uh, will bring back, or will go to the bench and bring in Mark Jackson, the freshman guard. UConn with a couple of substitutions as well. We have a timeout on the floor. 7.38 to go first half. Connecticut 21, St. John's 20. We'll be back at Alumni Hall in just a moment. Right now, back there. There's Mullen with the great pass up the other end of the floor. And there goes Willie Glass, the freshman super from out of Atlantic City. And that is skywalking, as they would say. <laughs> and Sam Goldapper and Art Pincus' book, If You Want to Talk, basketball and how to talk basketball what an interesting book That's i was right. reading it on a plane the other day they're from the new york times really a really first class kind of publication i liked it i had a lot of fun reading all the different jargon st john's has moved mullen up front we have a whistle down low on connecticut look at don perno i mean he is really screaming and yelling on the floor and he was using some choice. There's Dom, There's Dom, very excited. Calm down, Dom. It's a basketball <laughs> game. It's not life and death. 7.22 to game. Blocked by Broxton, who's back in the lineup. Connecticut with Hobbs and Kelly in the backcourt. Broxton, Coles, and Eddie Williams up front. St. John's now with Mark Jackson in the lineup, number 13, working the backcourt with Mike Moses. This is Earl Kelly hitting. Kelly finally got open for that shot. He now has two points. He averages 17 points per ball game. Well, if they can get Kelly going offensively, they'll really be tough here tonight because he is the guy that makes them go. Play a man-to-man -man defense. Outside shot is good by Moses again. 23-22. Well, nice to get by one. Nice scouting report told me he was a little suspect shooter, but he looked good there. Eddie Williams hits from outside, and UConn goes up by three. Eddie Williams, second leading scorer for UConn hits. That is Mike Feigenbaum, 6'6 senior from Lawrence, New York, in the lineup wearing a big knee brace. Well, he's all banged up with the left knee and the right thigh. He had four knee operations, Sam. What a courageous youngster. Just a real tough kid. Mullen, Feigenbaum, and Allen up, up front for St. John. Jackson, the freshman, number 13. It looks like they're playing a 1-3-1. One, one. Then it falls into a 2-3 on the first pass to the wing. 
Holland has it knocked away. This is Broxton on a three on two. Hobbs from outside. St. John's wanted a walking. Hobbs puts it down. Five point UConn lead, 27 22, 5.45 to go. Well, the tempo definitely right now is favoring Connecticut. They're really playing their style game. Now they're playing a zone, four man zone, and man to man on Mullen. Mullen. Pushing it up, and the rebound by Coles. Interesting, they're playing Hobbs chasing Mullen. Connecticut looking very good. Broxton outside. Mullen the rebound. St. John's doesn't want to really do this, even if they score here. That's not their style game, Sam. Feigenbaum missed it. Knocked out of bounds off Connecticut. 5.18 to go on the first half. He's got to get a with a five-point lead. If I were Louie, I'd get a timeout and get them back into their rhythm. He must be listening to me. Absolutely. That's why he came down the floor over here. Wanted to see what you thought. 5.18 to go. First half, we're at Alumni Hall at St. John's University. The Redmen trail the Huskies of UConn by five. We'll be right back. Just over five minutes to go, first half. St. John's after the timeout. Trying to slow the tempo down, but a long bounce pass by Jackson is stolen by the Huskies. Well, good coaching move by Dom Perno. He changed his defense again during the timeout, and it looked like he went with a two-man man-to-man and a three-man zone. St. John's tries to take away angles. They play a sagging man-to-man. It'll put a lot of pressure on the basketball. Calls. Foul by Jeff Allen. He's a very emotional kid, Coles. You can see here, number 34, really loves to play the game. There's Coles with a good head fake, puts it on the floor, goes up strong to the basket, and he draws the foul. Last year, he was absolutely not involved in her offense at all, and this year, he's starting to become a little bit more conscious of the fact that he's got to put some points on the board. Number 23 is Big Bill Wennington back in for Jeff Allen, and also back in the lineup for Ron Stewart for St. John's as they get the big guys back underneath. Well, St. John's really doesn't have a lot of depth. They have seven players, and today, I really want to tell you this, Sam. Louis Conaseca, we had a three-way conversation with Willis Reed down at Creighton in his office, and normally, as he... He threw a brick up that time. <laughs> but normally, Louis gives you the little con game. We're not good. We're not tough. People better understand. But this time, I really believe he's sincere about saying, hey, we really haven't been tested other than North Carolina. Coles hits the second. Connecticut with its biggest lead. Six points. 28-22. And pressure from the Huskies. The full trap in the backcourt. Well, it's a full court diamond zone trap. 1-2-1-1. Good move, posted yes. up. They post Wennington up to the middle to break the pressure. And now they're back in a 2-3 zone. Jackson and Mullen working the backcourt for St. John. Jackson, a freshman. And this is too much work trying to figure out what they're playing defensively. <laughs> I gotta tell Perno to slow it down. Big Bill is favoring that ankle. He is limping, the big center limping on the floor, but was able to make that shot. Twisted his ankle in the game against Rutgers. What a follow! Tim Coles with a beautiful follow. He now has 10. And UConn with a six-point lead, 3.50 to go first half. Yes, Wennington definitely it's noticeable that he's favoring his ankle, Sam. There he is posting up inside. Down low, that's Feigenbaum. Feigenbaum is a good open court shooter. If he has the shot, he can put it down as he demonstrated on the wing. Look at UConn get it up in the forecourt. Put a lot of pressure on a defense the way they run the ball up the floor. Hobbs and Kelly in the backcourt. St. John's likes to pack it in in the interior. Holmes. Takes it back outside. Hobbs. Good denial on the wings. Calls again. Oh, touched the top of the backboard and dropped through. Well, that's when things are going your way. That is pure what we say in a trade, Hail Mary time. Tim Coles, who came into the game averaging 7.7 per ball game, now has 12. What a game he's having. Well, they're going to go at him today. They're going to take it at Winnington with the injured ankle. He can't be as mobile as he normally is. Connecticut by six. Mullen the miss. Big rebound by Eddie Williams. 
Hobbs. Great oh. speed. What a feed for Cole. He's fouled by Jackson. What a pass from Hobbs underneath. Oh, we watch Hobbs in transition. Here he is pushing the ball up the floor. He has great peripheral vision, sees the open man, kicks it with his left hand, and there's the foul. Coles will go back to the free throw line. Coles is really running the court for a big yes, guy also. Is. Coles goes 6'7", 230 out of Baltimore, Maryland. And last season averaged just a little over five per ball game. Connecticut has really changed its style of play. Well, they really have some good athletes that they recruited that can play this style. And a coach in developing an offensive set, Sam, the first thing you have to do is evaluate your personnel and decide, do we have a team that can push it up the floor, or do we have a team that has to play half court? Don Perno said, hey, I know we got some athletes. We're going to come at you and run the ball up the court. Connecticut by seven. Well, the Huskies proved they could win on the road when they beat Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh by 21 here at St. John's. They lead by seven. Mullen forces it. It rolled off. He was fouled on the play. Eddie Williams fouled him. 2.16 to go in the first half, and St. John's trailing by seven. Well, you know, it's been very difficult. Is Don Perno pleading his case with the official? He said, hey, I know he's an All-American, but we didn't even touch him. But they're having a tough time getting the kind of shots they would like on a Mullen. Mullen's a pure free throw shooter. It's the first one, Chris Mullen, who after this season will certainly go after uh, a shot at the U.S. Olympic team. Oh, I think he's going to have a great chance. He's a Bobby Knight kind of player. Hits both foul shots. And now has 10 points, 2.16 to go. And there's the freshman, Jerry Besseling, back in for UConn. Huskies by five, 2.10 to go in the first half. I believe it's Gary Besselink, not Jerry, Sam. You're right, it's Jerry on there. They gave me the name Gary, but I'm taking your word. It's okay, coach. You're entitled to one, too. Foul called, it's on Jackson. He can't believe it. Look at Mark Jackson. He said, now, when I was playing high school, they didn't call that on me. Louis going to give us a little show. Here's Jackson playing defense. He gets beat on the move. Oh, there's definite oh. contact, but could have been an offensive That's foul. What Jackson was That's what I about. don't blame him complaining about that. I mean, Kelly just wiped him out. <laughs> hey, Earl, you're not allowed to do those things. Now, smile for me. He told me he was going to smile today, Earl. The score stays this way. He'll do a lot of smiling. He averaged 39 points a game in high school for Wilberforce High School. That's the same high school that produced as we watch Frederick coming on the floor. Remember John Williams? Super John, Nets? absolutely. And then they had Soup Campbell, who also played at uh, Providence. And they got a great coach there by the name of Bob Salisbury. Does a great job with his kids. Two minutes to go in the first half. Earl Kelly misses the second rebound. Ron Stewart for St. John's. He certainly doesn't have the picture-perfect form on his free throw. His elbow goes out. Interesting first half, Dick. Kelly, the leading scorer for UConn, has just three points, and the Huskies are up by six with a minute 45. And that's going to make Don Perno very happy. Feigenbaum almost lost it, finally did. St. John's really doesn't have good team speed. They don't have people that can really go to full length and use 90 feet and pressure you. If you can get the lead, Sam, you can be in good shape because it'll be very difficult for them to go to full court and get back in the game. There's Kelly. And a foul off the ball. Underneath, it's on UConn. I told you, Kelly can either shoot you in a game or out of a game. And if he doesn't convert and put down his free throws and open jumpers like that, St. John's gets right back in the door, even though they're only six down now. Alvin Frederick with the foul. Tom Perno, seventh-year head coach at UConn. He won 109 games. Really has been maligned. Really has been maligned by a lot of people because he hasn't been able to attract a lot of the supers who've gone away. Kids like Presley to Villanova. Kids like Adams and Murphy, which are missed free throw playing for Boston College. But that's going to happen, Sam. That's going to happen. You can't keep yeah. everybody home. Feigenbaum missed the foul shot. A minute 20 to go in the first half. And Connecticut leading by six. They had a good first half. There's Kelly. Second man of man defense. They got to get Kelly going off. Look at that move by Frederick. That's goaltending on the big guy. Winnington called for goaltending. And UConn now has an eight-point lead. 
Anytime the ball is laid across the rim, as we watch the drive across the lane, right in front of the rim, and a big guy goes up and gets it like that, inevitably it will be blown and called goaltending. It's on its downward flight. Good call. Less than a minute to go. First half. St. John's trails by eight. Mullen. Rebound, Besseling. Well, if UConn will play for one, I believe. Hobbs looks up at the clock. 40 on the shot clock, 38 on the game clock. Well, that's an intelligent move. Tom Pernell's instructions. Let's back it out. Let's place with some discipline. The question is, can they do it? Hobbs really does a great job running the offense for UConn. This is Kelly with the ball now. They're in a four. They're in a one-four set. They're going to isolate Kelly. They're going to run the clock down. Shot clock is off. Ten on the game clock. Five seconds. Kelly will take it. Wide open. How about that? They ran up perfectly. They wanted to isolate Kelly. They got him the basketball, and he delivered, and they go up ten at halftime. The sophomore runs off, having scored eight points. An outstanding first half for the UConn Huskies, who come into Alumni Hall at St. John's and at halftime lead the Redmen by 10 points. Connecticut 38, St. John's 28. We'll be back with more college basketball in just a moment. Half action. Now watch Broxton, number four, and the job he's doing on the boards. Wow, look at that follow. Yeah, good tip. Coles, I think that was Coles underneath. That was Coles underneath, and well, he's had a great ball game. Coles. Leading score with 11 points and the leading rebounder with six. A great first half for Coles and an outstanding first half for Hobbs, as we mentioned. Well, they really did a great job banging the glass to stay on the boards with St. John's. But continuing on that point we were talking about, Sam, you can't lose four quality players like St. John's right. did. You look at Villanova having a little down year. Roly Massimino has to replace Panone, Granger, Mulquin. You look at Syracuse having to replace as they fix the clock. There's the 45 seconds in the Big East. You look at the people they've lost in Routens and sure. Roon and Santa Fe. Yeah. Leagues run in cycles. Like you were saying to me, Dick, is the Big East a little bit down this year? They had nine players drafted in the first three rounds by the NBA. It's going to take time for the new kids, the kids like Aikens at, at uh, Pittsburgh, and the kids like Reggie Williams to get their own personality. Let's play ball. Here we go. Second half. Connecticut in the blue, leading by 10. Kelly, number 10. Broxton, number 4. Hobbs 14, Eddie Williams 22, Coles 34 comes outside. St. John's, Jeff Allen starting at center. Wennington bothered by that sprained ankle. It would be a mistake for Connecticut to slow down and play a half-court tempo game and get out of the style that got him the 10-point lead. 10 on the shot clock. 45-second shot clock goes off in the final five minutes of the game. Two seconds on the clock, and Kelly missed it. Rebound Willie Glass, the freshman from Atlantic City. Well, Kelly, poor shot selection right there, Sam. Well, the time clock running down. He had to get it up. This is Mike Moses. St. John's trails by eight, 38 to 30. Very important basket, the first one after the half, especially with a 10-point deficit. Good shot selection by Moses. Moses has seven. He's three for four from the floor in the ball game. St. John's shot 41% from the floor in the first half. And Connecticut, 56.6%. Great shooting first half for the Huskies. Rose is doing a good job taking away driving angles from Kelly. Foul is underneath on Willie Glass as he held Roy Broxton. There's Glass. Glass is a cousin of James Worthy, the Los Angeles Laker. In fact, he originally came from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Kelly inbounding, and he was called for traveling. Once the official hands a basketball to you in that situation, after a violation, you can't walk. It's treated as a ball inbounds. And he moved the feet and turned it over. St. John's trailing by eight. A minute and a half gone by, second half. The crowd here at Alumni Hall, near capacity crowd, has been alive from the outset of the second half. Trying to get the Redmen back in it. 1-3-1 zone. Hobbs chasing out front. 
Got to go to a 2-1-2 two two set. They are right there. Allen on the turnaround. Coles taps it out, and Hobbs runs it down for the Huskies. Long pass for Eddie Williams. UConn wanted a foul, didn't get it. This is Mike Moses. Mike Moses. Two in a row. Well, he drills the jumper, and as I told you earlier, the scouting report was that he was not a good perimeter jump shooter, but tonight he's demonstrating he does have some good range. Moses has, Moses has nine. St. John's trails by six. And here comes the crowd, number six, the six mans with St. John's. And notice thus far how Connecticut's game has slowed down. Well, St. John's doing a good job of stopping the transition, getting back. Mullen on Hobbs. It's amazing how tempo is so important, Sam. Eddie Williams. I think Allen got a piece of it. They keep it alive, and Broxton missed it. Out of bounds off Connecticut. Now the first half, those were going down. Now in the second half, they're starting to turn St. John's way. Well, here's Eddie Williams going strong. And there's people climbing. There's the one tip. There's another effort. Oh, up again. Tough break for Broxton. Yes, Broxton was right on the glass. Good effort, but came up short. St. John's with two baskets to start the second half. Now trailing by six. They led by as many as five in the first half. Connecticut able to turn it around. Mullen down low to Allen. What a pass, and it goes in. Good, and a foul. Perfect half-court execution against the zone. Get good ball reversal. Dump it down into the gutter of defense. Good timeout by Don Perno. The Huskies need a timeout first. 16.59 to go, second half. St. John's has come out and scored six straight points to cut Connecticut's lead to four. We'll be right back. Redmen of St. John's are within four. Luke Karnaseka has talked things over. Look at that last play. I Watch good, Mullins pass. Well, they do a good job reversing the basketball. There's the hook pass down inside to Allen. Allen goes up strong, gets fouled on it. He has four points. He has a chance to cut the UConn lead down to three. St. John's can give 10 fouls at the post position with Wennington and with Allen, and that's a luxury they have. Nice rebound by Stewart. Foul on Carl Hobbs. Hobbs trying to tie up Stewart. Fouled him. That's you know, the second team foul for Connecticut. Well, not a smart foul by Hobbs reaching in. Really unnecessary. Perno's got to be concerned yes. right now because the rhythm and timing. If you were to chart right now, Connecticut, they have not had one fast break opportunity in the first four minutes of this half. Mullen, perfect. 38-36. St. John's has scored eight in a row to start the second half. And Mullen made a great pass for a three-point effort and then hits the open jumper. Kelly. Knocked out of bounds. Saved by Eddie Williams. Mullen gets there. Look at Mullen. What a play! Unbelievable! He's a globe trotter, laying on the ground, dribbling with his fingertips. Marcus Haynes. Crowd loves it. St. John's with a chance to tie. Willie Glass. Big rebound by Tim Coles. Here come the Huskies of UConn. Now they push it up. Carl Hobbs and UConn's first basket of the second half. Almost four minutes gone by. Well, it's their first basket, and it also came off transition as we watch Frederick come on a floor who gives them instant offense off the bench, averaging 11 points a game. 40-36 Connecticut. Remember, they had a 10-point lead at halftime. That's right. Crowd is really into the game now. Allen feeds Mullen and returns the favor. Well, tremendous movement without the basketball. Ala Kelly Trebuca, Jim Paxson with Portland. Really plays so intelligently on the floor. Great move without the ball by Mullen. 14 points for Chris Mullen. Connecticut by two, 40 to 38. 15, 35 to go second half. Alvin Frederick, blocking foul is called. Looks like it's Mike Moses on the foul, or was it Chris? Ron Stewart. Stewart on the foul. You think he earns his money? He's sweating, I'm telling you something. He's Barishnikov on that sideline, acrobatic. <laughs> 
What a motion he puts into the game. 15 years and all 15 years, St. John's has made it to a postseason tournament. And is an outstanding coach. Three more wins and he catches the big Indian, Joe Lapchick, who's up in the sky cheering for him. Hobbs. Nice rebound by Frederick. Great move by Alvin Frederick. Well, he did a tremendous job of using the basket as he executed a power layup, a reverse layup along the baseline. Great Eight move. points for Fred Frederick off the bench. Connecticut by four, 42-38. That came against Pittsburgh every time Pittsburgh made a run at them. Connecticut would come up with a big basket. Thus far, they've come up with two big ones from Hobbs and then from Frederick. Well, and they've you know. got the ball back. There he is. There he is. Go ahead, Louis. He's orchestrating again. He's the maestro. You ought to put him in a symphony orchestra and let him be out front. The senior went to high school with Patrick Ewing. Carl Hobbs. Frederick, the junior college transfer in his first year at UConn. Mullen almost got a piece of it. Nice feed for Cole. Can't teach that. You don't put that in your offense. That's creativity. That's innovative basketball, just skills. Here we are, playground at its best, whirling, spinning. Defense comes over to give help, dumps it down. Cole slams it down and says, thank you, buddy. <laughs> back to the live action. Connecticut has it back up to six. It was down to two. Now Frederick's got some good offensive Doesn't basketball he? ability. Two, three zone. I think the, the thing for him is just to stay under control. Here's Ron Stewart for St. John's. They hit Allen in the paint. Well, Allen did a great job of stepping into the lane, stepping into the seam of the defense. The defense gave him an open area. He stepped right into it for the open jump shot. Connecticut by four, 44 to 40. Just under 14 minutes to go, second half. Connecticut one and one in the Big East. A loss to Georgetown, a win over Pittsburgh. St. John's one and oh in the Big East, a win over Providence. Well, Hobbs does a good job trying to keep these guys under control because they really want to go at about 90 miles an hour. How about that defense by Ron Stewart? How about that move by Mullen? And then he demonstrates, what's that word, ambidextrous? That's I'll it. let you, you say it. it. Using the right hand, good move to the goal by Mullen using his right hand. And they throw it away. Backcourt violation. And suddenly the Huskies are losing a little bit of their poise and a little bit of the control they had in this game. St. John's has cut it to two. Look at this play by Mullen. Well, remember, he's a left-hander. He goes around the back, a la Bob Cousy, takes it up strong, lays it on a glass. Anybody that doesn't believe he can play in the NBA, flat out, forget it. This kid is a bona fide NBA player. He's still got another year left after this one, though, here at St. John's. Here's Allen again. Besselink fouled him. A freshman, Jerry Besselink. He's from Kingston, Ontario, an outstanding player in Canada. They really didn't know what his talent was, and... Uh, He's turned out to be a pretty good find for them. Well, he grew three inches since his senior year. If I were Dom Perno, I'd get a timeout. Psychologically, it's important to have a timeout before they catch you after you have a big lead. But he doesn't agree with me, and he's the boss, and he's on the sideline, and I'm sitting with you, Sam. Dom Perno, upset over the call. Allen with a chance to tie it for St. John's. The Redmen have outscored Connecticut here. 15 to 6 Allen to start the it. second half. Allen's done a nice job starting the yes. second half. Connecticut's lead is one. Earl Kelly. Foul call. It's on Alvin Frederick on the rebound. Four team fouls for UConn. Well, there's Kelly going on a one-on-one -on -one move. Lays it up on a glass, and there comes Frederick climbing back. So he definitely was over the top. Jay Evans has the call. Good call. Third foul on Alvin Frederick. St. John's with a chance to take the lead. What a second half they've played. Well, you better believe that Parnaseca had them on a board at halftime talking about tempo because the tempo's been theirs. They've slowed it down. Ron Stewart. St. John's takes the lead, 45-44. 12 and a half minutes to go, second half. Stewart can surprise you. He can hit that 10-footer, 12-footer. Well, they got to have that kind of effectiveness out of your power forward. He's got to be able at least to keep the defense on it, right? Frederick against Stewart. Mullen knocked it away. It's still UConn ball. 
Could have been a charge on Frederick's definitely out of control. He's coming into the collegiate level out of junior college where they go up and down the court at 100 miles an hour, and he has a tendency to play out of control. And Eddie Williams comes back in for him. Vern Jiscom also coming back in for UConn. 12-16 to go in the second half. Checking the numbers on Chris Mullen. He has 16 points, four rebounds, and three assists. Jiscom and Kelly in the backcourt. Jiscom's a senior. Back in for Carl Hobbs. St. John still man to man. Earl Kelly, the sophomore. Nice shot. That was a pretty shot. He squared up. He faced the goal. He didn't go to the basket out of control. You know what's interesting? They have Mullen playing the point guard. And I haven't seen yet where their point guards try to take him with their quickness to the basket. He's playing off him. He's almost like zoning. Kelly now has seven. He had a poor shooting first half. He shot just one for six from the floor. St. John's. Trailing by one, 46-45. There's a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Covering the wings, back guy goes along the baseline. Oh, what a rejection by Frederick. Frederick gets it back from Jiscombe. What a break. No, they said walk, no basket. Walking violation prior they to the They called Jiscombe for traveling. Oh, bad break for UConn. You know who called that play? The crowd. The fans. The fans, baby, get credit for that one. Luke Karnaseka better give them an award. Timeout on the floor, 11 minutes, 30 seconds to go, second half. Connecticut holding on to the lead, but just by one. We'll be right back. We're at Alumni Hall at St. John's University. Watch this last play. The block by Alvin Frederick. Watch the break. Well, there's the block by Frederick. He keeps the ball in play. Here they are in transition. There's the little shuffle by the feet. The crowd begins to explode. Fredericks goes up there. I mean, he was flying through the sky, but the official heard that crowd and said, hey, I got a walk in But he called it right. Yes, he did. I thought it, good call. Good call. Good call. St. John's with the ball. They trail by one. They're extending the defense now. They're coming up and going about 60 feet in terms of putting pressure. See, the pressure and the traps will speed up the tempo of the game, force you to take a quicker shot. There's Moses. And it's a charge on well, Mike Moses. As soon as you leave your feet going down the lane, you're susceptible to the charge. Player control foul. Second foul on Mike Moses of St. John's. Just over 11 minutes to go in the second half. UConn had their 10-point lead wiped out. They lead by one. Frederick. Willie Glass with the ball for St. John's. And the Redmen push it up now. Williams goes down, Mullen goes by. 18 points for Chris Mullen. He has such great range and touch. Excellent follow through, rotation. He gets that pump fake to get himself free for that jumper. What a touch. They're in a 1-4 set right now. Four guys on the baseline, passing and going away, like a passing game. When I say 1-4, I mean one guy at the top of the circle, four guys stacking down low, and they're isolating Kelly one-on-one. -on -one. Kelly on Moses. Nice move by Earl Kelly, the rookie of the year in the Big East Conference last season. Led UConn in scoring last year, leads them again this year. He has nine points now. Well, he was in a scoring slump after a good start for about four games and came back and scored 20 against Pittsburgh. Coming down to the midway point, second half. UConn continues to hang tough. They lead by one. Allen misses. Mullins rebound, and he's fouled. Chris Mullins, 6'6", going to the hoop. Got fouled on the play by Tim Coles. Well, we take a look right here. There's a little jump shot by Allen. There comes Mullen. He's not a great jumper, but gets good position. And then he lays it up on a glass, uses his body to draw the contact. And once you get him on a foul line, what a career free throw shooter oh, in the mid-80s. Better than 86% this season. Drops in another. He gets that 90-degree angle with his arm. For all the young kids out there, look at the concentration. Watch the follow-through. Keeps the elbow in, and then he misses one. Thank well, you, he heard you. Really did a job for me, Chris. I really appreciate it. The Mike Tal Jinx works again. Well, he told me today, he said, Coach, I'm going to make you look like a star. Just tell him that I'm an All-American. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. 19 points for Mullen. We're tied at 48. Coles got fouled by Jeff Allen. What a game Tim Coles has had as he goes to the line. 
Coles has 13 points and seven rebounds. Here's that play again. Well, that's the perfect place to enter the ball from the wing. They run a little screen across, a horizontal screen. St. John's usually defends that play a lot better, getting over the top of screens. They got a master on the sideline when you talk defense. And the father of pressure defense, Al LaBalbo. Yes, used to teach boy you man theory. The man who taught Hubie Brown. Right, he was Hubie Brown's coach in high school. And then he was an assistant to Bobby Knight. And now he's an assistant with Luke Karnasek. Tim Coles hitting that first has 14 points. Came into the game averaging just a little under eight per ball games. Had a great game tonight. He must drive you nuts as a coach. He has 18 against Georgetown. Then gets zilch against uh, Pittsburgh and comes back here with a big one. Connecticut by one again. Huskies led by 10 at halftime, 38 28. Nine and a half minutes to go, second half. St. John's has gone with the same five for the second half. Ron Stewart outside gives the Redmond the lead again, 50 to 49. Well, he gets free because of the presence on the floor of Mullen, who draws a lot of people toward him. Eddie Williams over Willie Glass. Nice shot by Williams from outside. Williams, who averages 11 points a game, now has 10. Well, he was in the Air Force for three years. They got him out of the Air Force. He used to drive a bus in high school. Didn't play on a high school <laughs> team. I think he played one year, part of a year, down in Keenan's, Keenansville, North Carolina. The Huskies of Connecticut continue to come up with the big baskets. Here on the road at St. John's, they lead by one. Mullen, glass in the lane. Glass. Through the foul, good, and a foul by Willie Glass. He was fouled on the play, and well, St. John's regains the lead. Sam, I've been told all day today that he's a spectacular player. He has the great control of the body, comes back on the floor. You know, he could have possibly been called for a rule infraction called the vertical plane, which the defensive player is entitled to. And it looked like he came back with his body into the defensive player, but he got away with one, and it's a three-point opportunity. St. John's by one. Glass the miss. Williams almost lost it. I don't want to start talking vertical planes. The people out there said, please, it's just a basket. Don't make it so technical. <laughs> Look at Mullen just take the ball right out of the hands. St. John's by one. Glass again in the lane. What a shot by Willie Glass off the feed from Mullen. St. John's by three. And who said he's a freshman? He's playing like a senior right now, saying, give me the ball. I want it down the clutch. St. John's trailed by 10. They now lead by three. Nice pass from Williams to Coles. Again, UConn hanging tough. Big baskets when they need them. Well, good interior passing right there, and Coles has been on a money all night long. 16 for Tim Coles. St. John's by one, just under eight minutes to go. Second half. Alumni Hall at St. John's University in Queens, New York. Sam Rosen and Dick Vitale. Hope you're enjoying this Big East matchup. Well, I know Louis would like to get him out into a man-to-man -man because he really executes a real first-class man-to-man offense. St. John's will cut you to pieces. Stewart. Knocked out of bounds off Alvin. No, they say it's off Jeff Allen. Alvin Frederick had good position. Look at Earl Kelly. He liked that call. We have a timeout on the floor. Seven minutes, 33 seconds to go. Second half, St. John's 54, Connecticut 53. There's St. John's playing that sagging man-to-man. -man. Kelly missed it. Look at Coles. It's St. John's ball. Coles is playing his heart out on the floor, wow. Sam. He is diving. Look at the cheerleader. He's so emotional. He was that way in practice today. He's my kind of player. He went over the bench. Watch him go over the UConn bench for this one. Well, he should get the big blue award, the hustling award. The high Cole. hurdler. Well, Coles is my kind of player. But he hit it off Giscombe, and it was off Connecticut. Seven minutes to go. Second half. St. John's by one. He's still in that zone, 2 3 zone. St. John's has not made a substitution in the second half. Have no depth. Moses outside. Allen and Mullen and Glass continue to slide through the lane. Well, they're looking to get into the gap, and they really should get the ball naturally in the hands of Mullen. Moses. Five seconds on the shot clock. Moses with two. What a shot. Oh! 
Mike Moses. St. John's by three. Moses has 11. He's had a good second half. Well, you're in good shape there. Connecticut should have definitely put pressure on Moses with the ball with the clock running down. 56-53. Jiscom. Bad shot. Forced to change it. Coles is fouled. But again, look at the job Tim Coles is doing inside. Goes to the hoop. Gets the offensive rebound and gets fouled. Well, he's a little bit more mobile inside than Allen. He gets fouled as we take a look from another angle. He's got inside position to start with. He's got the great position. He's really working the boards, and he gets banged on the arm. He's a 68% free throw shooter. Right now, you win basketball games at winning time on the free throw line, ball control, execution. Remember, the clock comes off also That's at 4.44. Right. Coles with 16 points, eight rebounds. You know, Allen's had to do a real Superman job because Wennington is out with that ankle injury. Missed both. Two big misses. Allen the rebound. St. John's a three-point lead and six minutes to go in the second half. Well, when you're down three or away from home, you can't just afford to miss two at that crucial time. Not at all. Not in a man-to-man, -man, and this is what Louis Cornesecca normally loves. Good steal. Kelly taking it away from Mullen. Kelly runs into Moses. They call a blocking foul. Blocking foul on Mike Moses of St. John. You know, the official made an excellent call. you got to give the offensive flair as we look at Don Perno signaling an offensive set. Take a look right here. Well, I guess that's Luke, a turnover. Luke Cornesecca had walked to the midcourt line. He's still near midcourt. There he is. Oh, Louie, come on. You don't mean that. 1-4 offense, isolating him at the top. 5.40 to go, second half. St. John's by three, 56-53. Connecticut led by 10 at halftime. Alvin Frederick. Foul call. Strong move by Frederick. Allen and Glass were there. I think Glass may have fouled him. Allen, I thought, got a lot of the ball. Well, good first step and takes the ball to the goal exceptionally strong. Except one thing, Sam, he's a 57% free throw shooter also. And they just missed two. Let's see what they do here. Okay. 0 for 3, Frederick. down the stretch. Big misses for St. John's. The foul was on Jeff Allen, his third. The 57.9 free throw shooter. Missed both. Missed Stored four. rebounds. Remember those foul shots. Two misses by Coles. Two misses by Frederick. And 5.20 to go in the second half. St. John's leading by three. That's how I lost all my hair. They used to fall out. <laughs> Frustrating. Used to call that Frustration City. Moses. And it rolls off. Glass. The foul called. And it looks like it's on Tim Coles. Glass with a great move to the offensive board for the rebound. Glass is a very active player. There's Moses shooting the jumper, the left-hander. Bounces out, inside position. Nobody blocks out. Glass goes up. I don't see the contact there at all. Called it on Coles, and it's one and one at the line as both teams are now over the limit here in the second half. Mike Feigenbaum has come in for St. John's, replacing Jeff Allen. So that makes Stewart the big man up front. Well, they had to give him a little blow. He was physically exhausted. You know, he shoots 53% on a free throw line. Willie Glass, and very difficult to win close basketball games when you don't convert on a free throw they line. Said, oh, I'm it sure. wasn't Glass that was fouled. I'm surprised there, too. They said Stewart was fouled. Well, that's hard, hard to figure. Stewart makes the first. Apparently the foul was away from the ball. Broxton was called for the foul. I didn't see the on foul. On Stewart. I didn't see the foul on Glass, so obviously the official yeah. also didn't see it. <laughs> so I feel St. better John's now. Now with its biggest lead of the second half. 57-53. 5.07 to go in the second half. Don't be surprised if St. John's doesn't fall back into a zone as opposed to the man-to-man -man they've been playing. Oh, well, they're staying man-to-man. -man. Hobbs. Under five minutes to go. They play a helping man-to-man. -man. They give a lot of help to each other on the court. Notice the help right now in the lane by Mullen. They're almost like zoning in the lane. Kelly with a spin. 
Off the glass, Earl Kelly, big basket for UConn, 57 to 55. St. John's by two, the shot clock is off. There comes the full court pressure. The one guy you do not want to foul is Chris Muller. They should double him up to get the ball out of his hands. Kelly at six, or rather Mullen at 6'6". Six, six. Started by Kelly. As soon as you double team the basketball, it usually comes out of the player's hands. Feigenbaum, number 42 in the lineup for St. John's. Oh, Mullen wanted it. He was wide open. Stewart. I don't know if you want Stewart taking this, the big shot down the stretch here. Look at Hobbs. It's a four on two. Kelly, what a block by Glass. Frederick, the follow, ties it. Well, that's their game, Sam. Running up and down, using the whole 90 feet. They had a four on two break. Didn't get it on the first phase of the fast break, but got it on the offensive boards. Alvin Frederick has 12 points. Luke on the second once a time. Now he decides. Now they give it to him, I believe. Let's see. It is. He wants to get Allen back into the lineup also and settle him down. Timeout on the floor. 3.46 to go. Second half. The Big East battle by between Connecticut and St. John's is all tied. We'll be right back. Back at Alumni Hall here on the campus of St. John's University. Let's take a look at that last break by the Yukon Huskies. Well, here they're in transition. Here's the communication. Kelly's going to throw it up on a glass. And here comes Frederick with his great legs. 21, the junior college All-American. Good offensive rebound. Squares his body, lays it on the glass, and ties it on. Nice play. 340 to go, second half. Shot clock is off. Connecticut in a man-to-man. -man. Score tied at 57. Allen back in. Mullen was fouled underneath by Kelly. Well, and that's Luke, the guy you don't want to foul. Well, Corniseco will take that foul all night long because he's automatic. Put the two in your book right now. All right, we'll see. Dom Perno. He's saying, pack it up. Pack it up. Let's give help to one another. Let's pack it up. I want to go back to UConn a winner. Please don't let me go back with an L. 3.34 to go. St. John's, winner of the Big East tournament last year, 28 and 5. Put it in a book. Put it on one. You're hesitant. You don't want to put it down right. yet. Get that zero with the X through it. <laughs> Mullen has 20. He's four for five from the line. He's a basketball freak. Lou Corneseca said he lives in the gym. Lives in it. After 20. practice, he's on here shooting by himself. 21 points for Mullen. St. John's by two. There's the zone I told you about. They get the lead. They go to a 1-3-1 one, one one. zone. Makes me feel like I did my homework, Sam. Yes, sir, you did. Oh, Frederick. Well, Frederick says, put the zone, put the man-to-man. -man. I don't care what you're going to put, because I'm going like a express to the goal. Watch this, baby. Is this a high percentage shot? I mean, he drives right through the zone. He oh. violates every rule, and he just slams that home. Alvin Frederick with 12. And we're tied at 59. Three minutes to go, second half. Here comes the zone defense also by Connecticut. They came out of the man-to-man. -man. Connecticut led by 10 at halftime. 38-28. St. John's came back to take a four-point lead. Try to get it to Mullen from Stewart. It's still St. John's ball. 2.50 to go. They got to shade the area wherever Mullen is on the floor. Almost match up with him like a man-to-man -man out of their zone. Dom Perno calling the defenses from the UConn bench. Usually these kind of games go St. John's' way. The, the tempo, the style of play, in the 50s are a Luke Connor second trademark. 2.35 to go. St. John's 10 and 1 coming into this game. Connecticut 8 and 3, surprising a lot of people. They won their Connecticut Mutual Classic by beating Arizona State by 6 in the finals. Beat Pittsburgh at Pittsburgh by 21. 2.10 to go. Actually, you can run down the whole clock here and get the last shot because they're playing a very passive zone now. They're not playing very aggressively. The defense must put some pressure on the ball. Two minutes. With the score tied, the onus is on the defensive team to put some pressure. And they're very passive pressure, but they're putting enough that the official isn't going to give a five-second warning. 145 to go, second half, tied at 59. Stewart, don't be surprised if Luke Carnesecca holds it for the end. And what a block by Frederick. Glass gets it back, he was fouled. 
I say he's going to hold it to the end, and Stewart goes driving the base. And what a block by Alvin Frederick. Willie Glass alertly comes up with the follow and gets fouled. Well, here comes Stewart. He's going to drive the baseline. He gets all ball right here. And now we get Glass. They say he bodied up on him and fouled him. Remember, he's a 53% free throw shooter to freshman. A lot of pressure for a freshman on a free throw line. Boy, it didn't look like it bothered him at all. St. John's by a one. Yeah, talk to him, Louie. Tell him what you want. Nice spaghetti dinner for him if he makes this. Seven points for Willie Glass. Just I mean, calm. Willie said, Coach Vitale, no problem. A minute 25 to go. Second half. St. John 61. Connecticut 59. And a man will probably go to Kelly. Isolated 101 on Moses. There it is. There he goes. Kelly. Spin. Rolls off, kept alive by Broxton. A minute, 10 to go. Hobbs misses. St. John's ball. The lead for Stewart, it's all white. St. John's by four. Timeout, Connecticut wants a time. The Huskies miss two big shots. And St. John's comes down in the long strides of Ron Stewart. Take him to the hoop for the big layup. St. John's leads by four with 59 seconds to go. Well, Sam, not only did they come down and take the four-point le lead on that play, Hobbs takes the jump shot. There's Kelly, one-on-one, isolated. They come up with the offensive rebound, kick it back out to Hobbs. Good rebound. He, he shoots the jumper, but there's no rotation in that no one goes back to give any kind of floor balance. They get behind the defense, and they get a layup. Moses coming away off the tap from Glass. And look at this. Hobbs is caught sleeping. They go behind him over the top. Nobody's back. One, two, and up we go. 63-59. St. John's by four. These games usually go Lukwanasek's way. He's a master down the stretch. He's really, if you check his coaching career, where he's won over 340 basketball games. He's won so many in the last two or three minutes. Ron Stewart, who hit that big layup, now has nine points. The junior from Brentwood, New York, coming up with the big layup. And I'm sure he was happy about that after he had his baseline jumper blocked just before. Connecticut down by four. 59 seconds to go. Hobbs. Kelly. Kelly. Against Moses. No foul. Hobbs wide open. Missed it again. And it's St. John's ball. 45 seconds. He's thinking too much on that shot. He's had two wide open jumpers, and he's absolutely thinking on them. No foul. Mullen brings it across. He's got the ball. Gives it up to Moses. They foul him. Hobbs fouls him with 33 seconds to go. UConn was just waiting to, for Mullen to give the ball up. To give the foul. Don't foul. Look at him yelling. Don't foul. Go ahead, Louis. Plead. Plead. You gotta love him. He oh. pours out every emotion in his body in coaching. It's just absolutely, as I was telling the guy from the Pittsburgh Press at halftime that's doing a feature on Louis, wanted to know a little bit about him. I said the man is so genuine and sincere. 30 seconds to go. Hobbs pushes it up. Big Connecticut miss. trails by four. Kelly up in the air. Missed it again. Allen. They call it on Allen or they call it on Broxton. Foul on Connecticut. Allen with a big, big rebound. Broxton fouled him. Allen will go one and one at the line with 23 seconds to go. And St. John's up by four. Broxton has fouled out for Connecticut. Well, you know, Sam, we talked a little bit earlier about the fact that Kelly can shoot you in a game or shoot you out of a game. And tonight, unfortunately, the ball's not falling for him. And he forces a lot of shots. So his shot selection has to really be cured. But he is only a sophomore. Vern Jiscom is in the game, giving Connecticut three guards. Jiscom coming in for Broxton. And here is big Jeff Allen, the senior center. St. John's has hit the big foul shots. Glass hit two. And now Allen hits one. Connecticut, a couple of minutes ago, missing four in a row. That was really crucial. Put the W in a book. Another W and a step closer for Luke Karnaseka to Mr. Lapchick's all-time record here at St. John's. Under 20 seconds. Kelly blocked by Allen. Foul call. You don't want that foul. Luke Karnaseka's got to be furious about that. You don't want to stop the clock. 
There's the move by Kelly again. Well, Kelly, who has all kinds of offensive moves, takes it right at Allen. Allen tries to slam it. Not a good play by Allen, the transfer from Rutgers University. But he played a solid game here tonight. Yes, he did with Wennington apparently re-injuring that sprained left ankle. He was limping on it uh, early in the game in the first half. Allen played the entire or most of the second half in his place and did a good job. You know, I've seen Connecticut challenge so many people that seem to always come up short, but they always give 100% every time they're on the floor. And, you know, they got really ripped just recently when they lost this great in-town in recruit, a kid by the name of Charlie Smith, who decided to go to uh, Pittsburgh. Yeah. He's the answer to Danny Manning from out in the Midwest who's going to Kansas as he makes both right here. But you're not going to keep all those kids home. St. John's by three, 16 seconds to go. In for Glass, and they call the foul. They call the foul on Alvin Frederick as he came in from behind, reached in, and it'll be one and one at the line for Willie Glass. That's four on Alvin Frederick. Dom Perno still giving his team instructions. 15 seconds to go. I know Luke Karnasek is pleading for two shots. And we had the old rule where it was a two-shot situation, and I'm so happy that Ed Stites yes. and that committee decided to wipe that out. Got to give him a lot of credit for that. You know, what's the intent there? They say if the intent, uh, they're putting everybody Look back at right St. Now. John's. Yeah. No white shirts around. And Glass says, I don't mind that I don't have any friends around. I'll just drop it in anyway. He's hit three big foul shots in the closing minutes here. And he's a 53% free throw shooter. So what does stats mean? Nice. Willie Glass. 66-61 St. John's. 14 seconds. Just go. 66-63 with 10 seconds. And Connecticut calls time. The Huskies need a steal. You know, talking about that. Quick foul. You know, talking about the two-shot opportunity and making the decision whether it's two fouls. I believe as soon as you make contact with the body, it's got to be a two-shot foul. We'll be back with the final 10 seconds of this game in just a moment. Sam Rosen and Dick Vitale at Alumni Hall at St. John's. The Redmen have the ball in a three-point lead with 10 seconds to go. They get it in. Mullen gets it back. Moses across. He's fouled with five seconds to go. Well, it's, that's a situation where I believe it's going to be a two-shot foul. There's no doubt he's deliberately going to foul, make contact with the body. Let's see what he calls. He called, no, he called one and one. He said he was going for the ball. Luke Karnaseka wanted the... Uh, Exactly what you said. He well, said two-shot foul, intentional. Referee said no. He was going for the ball. That wasn't intentional. I'll tell but you it something. didn't look intentional. Right. He made he he disguised it. <laughs> you go legitimately for the ball, pressuring the ball. It should be a one-on-one. But if you go in deliberately for the body, it's got to be two. St. John's has hit six of seven from the line down the stretch. You know, Chris Mullen absolutely was the star. He, end of this game the second half he played brilliantly here's Hobbs and he hits it as we come to the end of the game the Redmen of St. John's have come from 10 points down at halftime they trail 38 to 28 they come back and they defeat the University of Connecticut Huskies 68 to 65 Chris Mullen with 21 Ron Stewart uh, with a big finish 13 points 16 for Coles to lead the Yukon Huskies Dick? Well, Willie Glass did a great job going down a stretch made four free throws but it was the play of the All-American Mullen you know as I told someone whenever you rate a player don't tell me he can't play in the NBA you don't rate guys for speed and quickness for the hundred meters in the Olympics you rate them for talent he got talent and he did a great job as St. John's comes back to win it they're now 11 11 and 1 overall, 2 and 0 in the Big East. UConn is 8 and 4. They are 1 and 2 in the Big East. For Dick Vitale, this is Sam Rosen. Once again, the final score: St. John 68, UConn 65. So long, everyone.